أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله تعالى على حبيبه محمد وآله وسلم السلام عليكم and welcome to our segment on Surah Al-Anfal Inshallah today we will cover the 10th and last ruku of Surah Al-Anfal verses 70 to 75 The previous ruku ended on the note that any gains acquired from a victorious battle should be utilized in the best way according to the Quran. We must practice taqwa, which means being mindful of Allah at all times, by staying within our limits and adopting piety in ourselves and keep seeking forgiveness. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the true meanings of the Quran by the grace of his Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Amin. With this dua, let's begin the 10th ruku of Surah Al-Anfal. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم verse 70 يا أيها النبي كل من في أيديكم من الأسرى إيا لمن له في قلوبكم خيرا يدكم خيرا مما أخذ منكم ويغفر لكم والله غفور رحيم O Prophet, say to whoever is in your hands of the captives, if Allah knows good in your hearts, he will give you better than what was taken from you. and he will forgive you and allah is forgiving and merciful in this verse allah is telling us how to reassure someone who is under our captivity this does not just apply to war captives in the literal sense but also to those who might be stuck in their mindset or state of affairs and feeling helpless and this can also be applied to ourselves we can also be at times prisoners of our own conscience. Allah is giving us his assurance because he knows best the state of one's heart. And if there is a good intention in the heart, then he will give them better than what they had and their state of affairs will be improved. And this is because Allah is forgiving and merciful. If he finds any good in your hearts, he will make a better way for you. The pain we experience and difficulties that we encounter are actually a cure for some flaw in ourselves. Verse 71. Wa yuridu khaya nataka faqad khanu Allah min qablu fa amkana minhum. Wallahu alimun hakim. But if they intend to betray you, then they have already betrayed Allah before, and he gave you power over them, and Allah is knowing and wise. فَأَمْكَانَ means he gave you power. This verse is highlighting betrayal. Betrayal of Allah means violation of the trust made with Allah and the misuse of the knowledge, blessings, abilities, powers, and resources given by Allah for personal gains. We have nothing of our own. Whatever we do have is given to us by Allah. If we use it according to the instructions given by the Holy Prophet وسلم, on the orders of Allah, then we will be able to fulfill the trust. Otherwise, we'll be guilty of betrayal. Betrayal of trusts was previously mentioned in the same surah in verse 27, where it said, O you who believe, do not betray Allah and the Messenger or betray your trusts while you know. Allah offered this trust to the skies, earth, and mountains, but they did not accept it because the burden was too heavy for them to bear. But when the trust was offered to man, he took it. And this is mentioned in Surah Al-Azal in verse 72. We need to ask ourselves, are we those kind of people that betray trusts? Because if we do fall in that category, we will have to suffer the consequences. Let's go on to verse 72. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَحَجَرُوا وَجَهَدُوا بِأَمْوَالِهِمْ وَأَنفُسِهِمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ أَوَّى وَنَصَارُوا أُولَئِكَ بَعْدَهُمْ أَوْلِيَا أُبَعَدْ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَلَمْ يُحَجِرُوا مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ وَلَا يَاتِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ حَتَّى يُحَجِرُوا وَإِنِّسْتَنْ وَإِنِّسْتَنْ سَرُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ فَأَلَيْكُ مَنْ نَسْرُ إِلَّا أَلَا قَوْمٍ بَيْنَكُمْ وَبَيْنَهُمْ مِسَاقٍ 
Indeed, those who believe and emigrate and strive with their wealth and lives in the cause of Allah, and those who gave shelter and helped, they are allies of one another. But those who believe and did not emigrate, not for you is their patronage in anything until they emigrate. And if they seek your help in the deen, then you must help, except against a people whom between you and between them is a treaty, and Allah is seeing of what you do. Walayatihim means their patronage, a friend who supports you in every situation. Astansarukum means they seek your help, as in physical help. In this verse, Allah is highlighting three things to reflect upon in how it relates to us. Number one, amanu, or belief, to believe in Allah and his messenger, the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Number two, hajaru, which means to emigrate, to change from one state to another, both physically and non-physically. Sometimes we need to change the state of our mindset to change our affairs and not be stuck in the old ways. Number three, jahadu, which means to strive. Always keep striving in the way of Allah and his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in every possible way. We can do all three things by utilizing ourself and the wealth that we have acquired. Wealth is not just money, but it also includes our abilities, skills, assets, and anything of value. If we are doing all three things and also helping one another, then we can be allies to each other. But if we are doing one and not the other, then there can't be any alliance. How can we help anyone if we are not doing it ourselves? The change starts with ourself first. Let's go on to verse 73. <laughs> And those who deny are allies of one another. If you do not do so, there will be a trial in the earth and great corruption. Those who are the deniers all fall into one category and are friends of one another. Their aim is to join forces and cause chaos and corruption in the land. This verse is a continuation from the previous one and it emphasizes the importance of helping those who believe, but have not emigrated. Otherwise, the deniers who don't want to conform will overtake them and create chaos in the land. The people of faith, whether they have emigrated or not, must conform to the commands of Allah and the Sunnah of his Messenger, the Holy Prophet, وسلم, and be willing to sacrifice whatever is required from this. Let's go on to verse 74. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَحَجَرُوا وَجَحَدُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ أَوَى وَنَسَارُوا أُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ لَهُمْ مَغْفِرَةٌ وَرِزْقٌ كَرِيمٌ And those who believe and emigrate and strive in the, in the cause of Allah, and those who gave shelter and helped, it is they who are the believers. Truly, for them is forgiveness and noble provision. As it was previously discussed in verse 72, those who believe, emigrate, and strive in the way of Allah and help each other in doing so are friends to each other. And these are the true believers who are granted forgiveness and noble provisions. We are all struggling in this world. So the message is to help each other rather than making it difficult for one another to continue on the path. Staying on the path can be difficult and we should always try to make it easy for the ones who are with us. Those who struggle together for the sake of Allah are called true believers. Let's go on to verse 75. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْ بَعْدُ وَحَجَرُوا وَجَحَدُوا مَآكُمْ فَأُولَئِكَ مِنْكُمْ وَأُلُّ الْأَرْحَامِ بَدُهُمْ أَوْلَى بِبَعْدٍ فِي كِتَابِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ but those who believe from after and emigrated and strove hard with you, they are of you. But those of blood relationship are nearer in the book of Allah. Indeed, Allah is knowing of all things. 
Olu al arhami means blood relationship. Those close relatives of blood relations. The importance of those who believe, emigrate, and strive is repeated again in this verse. It's a theme. People who are standing with you are of you, whether they were with you from the beginning or they joined afterwards. However, it's important that we give rights to the people who are related to us by blood. And this is clearly stated in this verse. Blood relatives have their own importance due to their closeness and their relationship with each other according to the law of Allah. Therefore, it is necessary to have a compassionate attitude towards all of them and encourage them to join the bandwagon. Share knowledge, skills, moral values, and make every possible effort for their improvement and well-being. This concludes our segment on the last Ruku, Ruku 10 of Surah Al-Anfal. Let's briefly go over what we discussed. A captive with good intentions in the heart has a chance to be free from being imprisoned, both physically and mentally, because Allah is forgiving and merciful, and he will make a better way for him. On the contrary, if a captive has dishonesty and deceit in the heart, then there is little chance for freedom, and if he does break free, he will be caught again. Those who believe, migrate, and strive in the way of Allah with their lives and wealth, and those who shelter and support them, are friends to each other. They are the true believers who are granted forgiveness and noble provisions. And they are the ones granted authority to help others who haven't migrated or reached their level yet. All deniers are friends to each other, and so too are all believers who fight for the truth together. Whether they were believers from the beginning or they joined afterwards. However, it's important that rights to blood relatives are given priority because they are closer in relation. May Allah grant us the ability to understand the Holy Quran and its true meanings in light of the life and guidance of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ameen. Thank you for joining us for this segment. Until next time. Sadaqullahu al-Alilazim. Allah speaks the truth, the exalted, the great. Sallallahu ta'ala ala habibihi Muhammadin wa alihi wa sallam.